morning, everyone. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord again. Thank the Lord for allowing us to come together on this beautiful Lord's Day, a day that he has made. And we need to rejoice and be glad in it. It's also Pastor's Appreciation Day. And it's so good to be able to honor our pastor and first lady and their children today. And uh, we missed them. But they're back. They came back. They left out, I think, Monday of last week, and they came back Friday. But we missed them. And I'm glad that God gave them traveling mercies, and may they be rejuvenated and ready to go on with what's facing them. Thank God for our pastor, first lady, and their children. And we're also privileged to have with us this morning Brother and Sister Mobley, our first lady's parents. Some of you might not know them. They're two sitting right here. It's always good to have them with us. They've been here for a whole week. I just wish they could be here a whole lot more. And may the Lord bless them and give them traveling mercies when their time comes to go home. And we want them to hurry back. And like I said, it's good to see every one of you here. And the Lord has given us a wonderful day to come together in the name of Jesus. We had a good lesson this morning. And if you're not coming to, to our uh, Sunday school meetings, you're missing out on something, something good. I'd like to encourage you to come next Sunday at 10 a.m. for our life group or Sunday school class, if you would prefer that. Let me take your praise reports and our prayer request. And I want to start on this side over here. Anybody, sister? Amen. Barbara, yes. Brother? Amen. Let's pray for Sister Kathy. Anybody else? Sister Kathy? Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Brad? Praise the Lord for that. Yes. To God be the glory. Anybody else in that section over there on my extreme left? All right, this section here, anybody? Sister? Yes, amen. The sister right behind her. Praise the Lord for that. It's good to have you. Sister, yes, in the back. Yes, Sister Carter. Yes, anybody else in the back? Sister, all the way in the back. Thankful you're here too, sister. Yes, everyone. Anybody else before I move? This section here, anybody? Extreme right? Sister. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Praise God. He deserves our praise. Praise God. Yes. I saw another hand. I thought, sister. Yes. Yes. 
anybody else in that section. I'm going to give you plenty of time. Up on the platform. Yes, amen. Pastor. Amen. Let's pray for all of those that are going back to school, even those little tykes. Let's pray for them and pray for all the teachers that God will help them as they endeavor to teach. We need them. And, you know, let's... Also pray that everything that's said and done here today will be pleasing to God. And when we leave here today, may we leave knowing we've been in his presence and we have blessed him and he has blessed us. He inhabits the praises of his people and we cannot praise him too much. Let's don't forget that. And when you pray this week, pray for all the leaders of the church, from the pastor and first lady, all the way down to me. Pray for us all. I'm not what you call a regular leader. I just do these things like this to help out. But I need your prayers, and I pray for you. And let's pray for the entirety of the body of Christ worldwide. Would you stand, please? Hasn't God been good to us? He allowed us to wake up this morning and get ready and come to church. Praise his name. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name loving you and praising you and magnifying your name, Lord, for all that you've already done. And Lord, we just thank you for all the traveling mercies that you've given all of us. We thank you for this great day, this Lord's day, Lord. And help us to worship you in spirit and in truth today. May the name of Jesus be lifted up in every heart here. And Lord, if there be any lost among us, we pray that they'll be saved before this day is over. And Lord, we just thank you for every prayer request you've already answered. And we know that you answered them because man could not do it. And Lord, you heard every prayer request given in. You know the needs. You know everything that it takes to take care of these situations. We pray for them, Lord. We put them in your hands, Lord. And we pray that you'll lift these people up that need a touch. That you'll be with those that are traveling. That you'll be with our pastor this week as he goes and speaks, Lord God. And we just thank you for all that you have already done for us today. And there's so many things that you bless us with. They're too numerable for us to remember. And Lord, again, you heard every prayer request. And we pray that you'll intervene and bless in every case. Bless every part of this service today. And may you be pleased with us, Lord. When we leave here today, may you be pleased with us. And may we rejoice and be glad in this day that you have made. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Ridgeville. We're thankful everybody joined us this morning in our celebration, our pastor and first lady and their family. We're going to start out this day with our nursery. Miss Jenny. Would you like to come down here, Pastor? Sister Betsy? Isaac, Izzy? We have these from the nursery. They're made with a lot of love. And that they're not perfect, but they're made. That's her foot, his foot, yes. We want you to have them so you can remember y'all to walk by faith and not by sight. I said, and I appreciate everything y'all have done for us and all the prayers you gave us. And we love you so much. Thank you.
him a black eye. <laughs> you wouldn't use that eye out a lot, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we want to thank y'all for all you are to us. You can look around and see many that you've been a light to, friend to, family to, words of wisdom to. And we just thank you for everything and giving of yourselves sacrifices that you've made for us. Um, we'll give First Lady the envelope. How about that? We'll give Pastor this bag. And we're going to let you pull, um, open yours because we want you to know that part of what we're saying is what we want you to read back to us. Miss Izzy Boo, uh oh, uh oh, penny for your thoughts. That's the angels' way of letting us know the angels are around. We thank you for being a part of us and always giving so much light of yourself, sharing mommy and daddy with us in ministry and Bubba. And Isaac, I don't know why you think you had to grow up so big and leave us. But yours is coming next. <laughs> Izzy, we love you too. You can share that with me. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. We love y'all. Our pastor is a is sweet tarts for everything. He does he is always there to pick up the Reese's pieces and answer our whatchamacallit. Sometimes we act like airheads or nerds and you probably think we are from the Milky Way. <laughs> but your you've made a mound of difference in our lives. Thank you for getting us in a doublement condition for heaven. And thanks for um making us sweet sweet smarties. You deserve Hundred grand payday. <laughs> Parts now and later. You get to think your crowd is from the Milky Way. Sometimes I think my crowd is from a totally different galaxy. <laughs> and we travel far and wide. Uh, Pastor and Sister Betsy, I just want to thank you personally for all that you have done for me, for standing with me, believing in me, and allowing me to teach our teens. It has been challenging, but it has been fun. Um, we've had many ups, we've had many downs, but without ups and downs, there is no life. Um, our church has seen challenges, but you two have faced it head on and have showed us the best way to face every one of them. Um, and you've always come out on top. And we've come out on top with you. And I think I speak for everyone here. We're ready to face the next one head on with you. Um, but I believe it's growing time now. So um, we're right behind you. I want to say we love you. Thank you for everything. The godly example that you guys lead for us, that you show our teens, um, that you show me. And just thank you all around. Um, this is just a little gift from RSM for you guys. 
I think it'll get you to McDonald's at least once, maybe twice. Might take the family, but um, Isaac, thank you for being a part of the youth. You make it lively sometimes. Um, other times we have to wake you up and just pick him. Um, but no, thank you guys so much. There is a card inside for you and some snacks. And Miss Izzy, we appreciate you too. Everybody, if y'all don't know, this is our associate pastor, by the way. Um, she does everything, so thank you for all that you do too. I get the pleasure of presenting you a gift from the ladies' ministry. A lot of things you do are behind the scenes for me, and I just want to thank you for that. I thank you for FOMO, for ladies' meeting. If you're not going, you should go. Um, but you pour into us behind the scenes, on the platform. You're always there when the phone rings. Um, and I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for investing in our future, helping us walk through things from our past, and pouring into us in every area of our lives. Thank you. Pastor, this is for you. And Isaac, this one is for you. And little Miss Izzy, thank you for sharing your parents with us on a weekly basis and all the hours um, that we get with you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, there we go. Uh, that's for Pastor and uh, for, from the men's ministry. Thank you um, for uh, just showing us what it is to be a father and um, a leader and um, a husband in a religious and Christian godly way. So uh, thank you for that. All right. Well, it's my turn. Church, we have a good pastor, sister pastor, brother Isaac and Izzy. You're tremendous. God sent you here for a reason. Church is for, is for a reason. We have to be behind that reason. We have to help to pull the load. But it's hard sometimes. But we got to press on for the high mark of the calling from Jesus. This is just a portion of what we can pay back to you from the church, not behalf of the church, from the church. We thank you. We love you for everything you do from the bottom to the top and in between, side to side. You all of that to us and we thank you and we praise you for everything you do. Not because you're Charles, not because you're the pastor, because you're a man of God and we thank you for that. Love you. Well, it's my turn now. Um, it is an honor to work aside the pastor. He's taught me a lot in the last few years, and he'll continue to teach me as long as I'm obedient. And if I'm not obedient, I'll be out the door. I can tell you that. But I'm thankful I get to work with Izzy and Isaac, and what a joy it is when I'm in my office. I see these little feet. I hear these little feet. They'll come in there, and they'll sit down. They'll talk to me while I'm working. And, you know, that says something to me. It says something to me about their love and how their parents inspiring them and their love for God. Because if it didn't roll down, it wouldn't roll down on us, you know. And it shows in them the love that they have for God. And, you know, as I do every year, you know, I try and acknowledge pastor and sister Betsy's parents and sister Betty couldn't join us this week this year but I'm thankful that they had godly parents because we wouldn't have a godly pastor and first lady and they wouldn't have godly parents 
And so just a little thank from our church for y'all's goodness. You know, we're blessed because y'all have been obedient to God. And we're very, very thankful. And we appreciate all y'all have done for your children. Yeah. And all, yes, yes. all you moms and dads who have lost children, understand this. God's word is true. His promises will not come back void. The devil cannot take God's promises from us. You know, they can be hindered, but he, those promises are promises, and they're from God. His word is true. You know, um, we are so thankful. You know, I know we have an artist in the house, but this is a little special this year. We have a new painting for Pastor and Sister Betsy. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He, God's using pastor, and we're prospering. We're growing. You know, we might not be growing numbers yet, but we, as the body of Christ here in Ridgeville, are growing ourselves stronger in Christ. We're growing spiritually because of the leadership that we have here in Ridgeville. And one thing, these little things, these are our little children's fingerprints here on this painting. And these are our thumbprints here. So we have, that pastor knows, that we stand behind him as we've said since day one when I started doing this a couple years ago. We stand behind this man of God and his wife and his family. And as long as God gives me the ability and we as a church going to stand behind him and go forth and press forth no matter what the devil comes at us we're going to press forward and we're going to put that old devil packing because we're going forth we're to grow you know and we're to grow through the things that we go through and we're just so thankful and appreciative of pastor and sister Betsy and Isaac and Izzy and we just love y'all and appreciate y'all very thankful for the leadership that y'all have here Thank you so much. I tried to be a gentleman and let my wife go first. And she said, why do I have to go first? So uh, you, you can be seated. All of these moments, all of these words, so often in, in my mind, I don't see it. I don't feel like we're worthy. Then I begin to look at your lives and I begin to look at the church. And I see growth. Sometimes we don't see growth until we're a ways away. Healthy growth. We can grow big. It's not so healthy. But we can grow healthy. And in the midst of growing healthy, God transforms lives. And I'm honored today. Double honored if I could say that. Because you never know the life impact you'll make. My wife and I were in the airport coming back Friday. And we have our Church of God backpack, and it was sitting on the ground. And lo and behold, two people from California, church people, just simply asked the question, what does that mean? And we struck up a beautiful conversation. And can I tell you, they walked into the church house today. Amen. And so it's so good to have Bobby and Gloria with us all the way from California. She leads the women's ministry where she's at. She said, I've done everything there. And now when I say everything, you have to think. Now, she come from a church of 6,000. And this young man has done his share too. But God is not worried about the largeness of a church you can do your part in a 20 member church as much as a 6,000 the impact that you can make is substantial all you got to do is say here I am Lord use me 
Well, I don't have the great words. You don't need a degree to follow God. I'm getting preachy, and so, I, you know, it's my day. Y'all bear with it. I'm just kidding. We make every excuse why we can't do for God. He saved you. You got a testimony. You got a story to tell. Yes, Brother Gene, we go through our ups and downs, but that demonstrates the goodness of God. He never changed in my lowness. He never changed in my highness. He was steady. A reflection of what you and I should be, a steadiness to this world. Our light shouldn't flicker high and bright just because we're going through something. It should be steady. A lighthouse in a lost and dying world. You never know what one conversation can have. I'm honored. They could have went anywhere. Now, they're house sitting, you, you, you know. And the beach, they could have been at the beach right now. But they chose to be in the house of God. And so we want you to be blessed because you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be in the house of God. And so I'm grateful for all these gifts, all this candy my kids, I'm sure, will eat. But most of all, that you've stuck with us. In almost seven years, we've, bon we've battled some battles. We fought some wars. We got the wounds to show it. But our spirit said we're never going to give up. We're going to persevere. We're going to be overcomers by the word of our testimony. And I'm looking forward to what God still has to do for us today. And I need to turn this over so we can have church. So, First Lady. Maybe I should have spoken first. I'm kidding. Um, I do want to say thank you for your gracious um, generosity to us. We greatly love each and every single one of you. And we just thank you for still being here. Um, again, like he said, we have gone through trials. We have gone through battles. We have um, gone through a lot of things in the last six years. But you are still here, and we are grateful. And we just thank you for um, being here today to celebrate with us. Because we know, the four of us know, that if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have anything to celebrate, right? So, if you will, stand with us as the praise team comes and we get ready to worship. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to praise the Lord. Amen. Here at Ridgeville Church of God, we speak life. How many of you need life this week? Amen. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with Him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. Lord, Your Word and Your Spirit, they comfort me. I am increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body through your covenant. I am healthy. I am blessed. There is nothing missing, nothing broken. You have made me a blessing, and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Amen. Will you worship with us today? Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you that we can come before you and worship freely today, Lord. God, we just praise you today, God, and we lift you up, God. We give you the honor and the glory today. God, we just praise you in Jesus' name. Worship with us today. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has a great thing. our Savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things oh hero of heaven you conquered 
the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things faithful through every storm you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and i know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things god you do great things You free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Oh hero of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Amen. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things, oh hero of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dance in your free awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things oh hero of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things oh god you do great things amen lord we thank you for those great things that you have done lord we just worship you and thank you god for your greatness lord Thank you, Lord, for being faithful to us. God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. 
tonight I'm slowly drifting a vagabond and just when choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind so so long to my old friends burden and bitterness you can just keep them moving you ain't welcome here from now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you save my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name forever. Savior, because He healed my heart, He changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God.
It's everlasting upon everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So much to be thankful for. Amen. And if you don't have it, you're failing to recognize it. Amen. I want you to grab your Bibles. It's custom here at the church to read a scripture prior to offertory. Looking today on trying to figure out, God, what, what do I turn? What do I do? He turned my attention to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And it's a reminder to you and I. The scripture says in the words of Jesus, Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rough rust can destroy it. And where thieves can break in and steal, but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, rust can destroy it or thieves can steal it. For where your treasure is, there's your heart. And I don't know about you, but it's great to have a big pile of something here on earth. You may call it a home. You may call it a nice car. You may call it your mansion. But if we're not storing up for the kingdom of God, we're doing it all wrong. See, he's blessed us above and beyond what you and I deserve. And all he's asked is that we, as managers of what he's given us, say, God, store this up. And you'll never know, listen, when you give, it's not to receive monetary value back. If that's why you give, can I just tell you, keep your money. We don't need it. Because you're not a cheerful giver. But God wants you and I to say, I, I couldn't wait to the day that I was able to say, God, here's my Thanksgiving offering. I thank you for what you've done for me, and I thank you for what you're going to do for me. So I want us to do that right now. I want you to grab your tithes and offering. And Father check our hearts and if anything that we are doing is building up a treasure here on earth I pray that you would move and minister unto us and change our mindsets that we thoroughly and sincerely aim to build up treasures in heaven and knowing that that which we give to the house of God is to bring life into someone's lost world Maybe it's an opportunity to travel abroad and be able to minister to people that don't know you. And even minister into our local community. But whatever we do, God, we do it for your glory. So as we give today, Lord, will it build up your kingdom? And may you find us with a sincere heart, wanting nothing more than to please our Heavenly Father. This we ask in your most holy name. Amen and amen. Would you come and bless the house of God this morning? Goodness 
presence of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lays down, I surrender now. I give you pastor appreciation and I promise you I'll get you out in time to eat some food but I want you to know some things see today the Lord gave me a message to preach and I'm going to hit it in just a moment but I want you to understand when we talk about the faithfulness of God it means that first in order to acknowledge his faithfulness you got to acknowledge I've gone through some things that felt like he forsaken me Felt like those I depended on forsaken me. That I'm in a battle all by myself. And if you can't sing through your trials, if you can't sing through your hardships, you need a song. Now we can go all the way back to the red backs. We can sing contemporary. I, I don't really care what your song is. I just got to know you haven't lost it. 
There's a song that says, I've never lost my praise. That means when hardship comes my way, there's still a song. Why? Because there's still a fight in me. And I want the enemy to know you cannot defeat me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, today's an emotional day for me and my wife. This is the due date of my son that we lost. But what do we do? We sing about his goodness because through it all, I've learned to depend on him. Just last week, having to go through the loss of a pregnancy. But what happens on a Sunday when you can sing, I thank the Lord. I know it's easy to come up with excuses to stay home. I know it's easy to throw up in the towel and call it quits. It's easy to say I'm the only one that's serving God. But the Lord gave me a message today that we got to stay together strong. You are not the weakest link. There is no weak link in God. You're all created in the image of God by the power of God and he's equipped you not to be the weakest link but to be strong and mighty and courageous so when somebody needs a shoulder you can say lean on me when you're not strong. I know that's off tune but you know give me some grace today okay. I didn't rehearse that song. Let me read to you real quick. We'll make it quick. In 1 Peter chapter 4, Peter is addressing some people. Now, Wednesday nights, we've been going through the book of Revelation, and Peter begins to address this, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Now, I did not read that because we're leaving, okay? This is not the end of our service here, okay, y'all? The enemy tried to speak that in your mind. It's a lie. But there's an end coming to this earth. And he goes on to say in verse 8, And above all things, have fervent love one for another, for love covers a multitude of sin. Who has sinned? They wish love would cover. He loved us that yet while we were in sin, he died for us. He knew that you were going to need love. Not, he didn't, listen, he don't need your judgment. Somebody walks in this door and you look at them. Listen, I, I know some of you probably looked at this couple right here and thought, who are they? Does it matter? The steps of a righteous person are ordered by God. And if God brings somebody all the way from California that we just met, you know, very few moments in an airport, you cannot tell me that God doesn't care about you. You can't tell me he's forsaken you. Why? Because these are encouraging moments. Encouraging moments. I want you to be seated real quick. We're going to continue going through 9 and 10, and I, I promise you I'll have you out before the chicken's crust gets soggy. Now here, look at this. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. That should convict us all. Paul is addressing these individuals. Now if we go back to chapters or verses 1 through 6, we can begin to see that he really begins to address some things. He addresses these things such as, hey, listen, you, you got to cut out the sin. And he actually names some sins. He begins to go down this list and he calls them out. Why? Because it only takes one sin to draw you away from God. And when you get comfortable with one sin, you draw other sins to you. The enemy understands, I'm not going to overload you. I'm just going to tempt you here and get you comfortable. Get you thinking there's nothing wrong with that and then I'm going to hit you with another one. And before too long, you begin to question everything about God. 
But watch, he goes on in this, and he says, listen, in, in verse 10, as each of you has received a gift, minister to one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. You got a job to do. I know it's pastor appreciation, but I'm nothing without you. I got nobody to preach to. Could you imagine me preaching to my wife every Sunday and she'd be the only one in the sanctuary? She wouldn't be. Because the Bible says that where two or three come together in my name, they're in the midst I am. So if, if, if everybody else never showed up, God is still here when my family shows up. And you walk through some circumstances and you think God is nowhere in this vicinity. But I got news for you. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at all times. It's the enemy messing with your head. Quit listening to the mind games. God cares about you. And together we can be a mighty army. Or we can be the ones that kill off the army. See, growing up, I played quarterback. And my brother Johnny, who will be kicking off our revival next week, was my center. If you don't know anything about positions in football, let me educate you just for a moment because my Gamecocks got whooped up like they got polished really good. So, you know, I'm in mourning. I don't have my sackcloths on, but Brown will satisfy. The center is the one that holds the ball, and when the quarterback gives the proper cadence, the ball is snapped. There's a position in front of the center that's called the nose guard. The nose guard is only trying to penetrate the line so that the linebackers can come shoot the gaps or the defensive line has a way to get to the quarterback. If Johnny failed to do his job and the left guard and right guard failed to do their job, I'm a sitting duck. But if they do their job, they buy me time to execute the play. And all I'm simply saying today is you have been called to help execute a play. And the play is simple. You don't need all of these things and be like, what are they saying? You ever seen a coach on the sideline? I, you'd almost think he's doing sign language. And then be like, what is that? At what point does the positional player know, don't pay attention to this, this is where the sign is at? And if we're not careful, we'll be the same way. We'll get distracted by everything around us and we can't hear the voice of God. And the voice of God is really what we need to hear. And when we do that, we can stay strong together because we know that God's got something good for you. I believe, Sister Chrissy, your best days are ahead of you. And we don't say that just to be echoing that and sound spiritual. You got to say it with a fervency. God said the, the fervency of a prayer. Have you ever prayed a prayer you felt like God couldn't answer? I'm not going to be over spiritual. I have prayed prayer. You, you, you know, I'm like, God, I need a wife. Not just any wife, you, you know. I, I mean, I need a good one. And four days before I'm 28, we go off to the chapel and we're getting married. I'm not singing that song for y'all, y'all, y'all. I know it's in your head, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> but can, can I tell you that it didn't mean that the enemy didn't bring people in my path to tempt me? To try to say, well, maybe this is the one. And it's easy to lower our standards that God has for us. And settle for just anything because you want to be like everybody else. But God didn't call you to be like everybody else. You are... Perfect and wonderfully made in the eyes of God. Your fingerprints, Brother Phil, doesn't match mine. 
But the creator that created you created me for a purpose. He's equipped you with a gift and equipped me with a gift. And together as an army of God, if we exuberate our gifts, lift them up, exercise them, and believe the gifts, we can conquer whatever comes our way. So yes, I believe growth is coming. I believe the day is going to come that promises that God has given us is going to come to pass. The the seats that you sit in, you won't be the only one in it. I'm declaring, listen, I'm declaring this, that I believe your lost children are coming home. Well, preacher, that's easy to say. No, I believe it. I believe that the lost spouses are coming home. I believe the miracles that you are wanting God to do is going to take place. I believe the momentum that he's equipped us with is coming to pass. Why? Because you got to declare it. Not the name it, blab it, grab it, all that kind. I'm talking about you got to believe in the God you serve. Is there a temptation that you need? Gone. You got to fervently pray and ask God to take care of it. Because God needs you in his army. I need you in the army of the Lord. And so I'm going to close with this. I got like a bunch more I can say. But I promise you, I'll let you get some chicken crust. The essence of it all, and this is life's roughest storms, prove that there's strength in your anchor. The old song that talks about the anchor holds. It holds. My father-in-law preached a message that there was three types of anchors. And I don't remember the names of them. I know one looks like a, a mushroom upside down. And we know the traditional anchors with the two hooks on it. But at some point, your anchor's got to grab. If you've never been fishing, I'm going to help you real quick. If an anchor doesn't grab, you drift. And you fall away from the position you really want it to be. So I want you and I, as we stand, I want you and I just to ask God, Help my anchor hold. So with every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you today. I know that I can continue on and Lord, it would just be self. But you've moved. And you brought an awareness to us that we got to do some things together. You've equipped each and every one here under the sound of my voice and even those who are watching us through live stream that you've equipped them with a gift for the kingdom of God. And the enemy has spoken into their minds that they'll never be productive. That they're insignificant. They can't possibly matter. But you've sent me here today to say, listen, if we'll stay strong together, will break through the walls that seem impenetrable. We'll bring down strongholds. And together we'll help you achieve your promise as you help me achieve mine. But I need your anchor to hold. And so, Father, could we do this as a body? Could you right now just take your hand And act as if you're dropping the anchor and say, Lord, let it stick. Let it grab. Because, Father, I'm living proof that there are moments that it's so easy to drift. But if I can grab a firm foundation of you, you steady the ship. You keep me in the position that I need to be. And no matter the waves, No matter the hardships, when the anchor holds, when it holds, it keeps me steady. It keeps me in purpose. 
and it keeps us strong. So God, as a church, we drop the anchor. Despite the world around us, despite what the leaderships may do, we drop the anchor firm in the Word of God. Our standards are firm. Our beliefs are firm. Because there are those that need to see that there is stability in Christ Jesus. There is and always has been the God that can speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. So Lord, today to those that are struggling, to those that are having a storm in their life, we speak peace. And as they've dropped the anchor, God, I want you to help them to remain strong and fasted in you, in your word and in prayer. You lead them and guide them and that their gift that you have equipped them with manifest itself for the purpose of growing your kingdom. And that all of us this week can be an impact in the kingdom of God. Would you bless us now, Lord, as we go to the back and have a time of fellowship? Would you minister to us and let it be a great time in the Lord? Would you bring us back tomorrow with our men's meeting? Wednesday for Bible study one more time. And would you bless us in this upcoming revival that souls would be saved, delivered, and set free. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Would you love on somebody? Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God.